This is August 2011, but we're going to go back and look at the story of Thomas Christopher Hall sitting here beside me and some of the events that were important in his 90 years or almost 90 years of his life. The very earliest photo, or one of the earliest, is of Tom's mother, Teresa McDonald. Beside her is her only brother, Frank. Sadly, Tom, you had very little time to get to know your mother, as she died when you were four years old. It makes me cry. In 1925. Could you tell us about Teresa's family of origin, where she fit in the birth order, and where she was born? She was born in New York City, and she was 26 when I was born. So she's 27 in that picture, which has me in the right lower corner, one year old. <clears throat> Her family came from Ireland. Her mother was Susan McGloin, some, from somewhere in Southern Ireland who married Isaac Smith in Enniskillen in County Fermanagh. They then migrated to the New York City before they had any children, and subsequently they had four or five boys uh, who did interesting things. Thomas was a translator who translated first for the World War I Army, then for President Wilson, and finally as the official translator the American ambassador to the court of St. James in London. They had one boy and he died as a result of an accident in the blackout. We don't know what's happened to most of those boys because the father, uh, Smith, died and sometime after that Susan McLean remarried someone whose name, last name was MacDonald. We don't know anything about him because then she died and my mother was an orphan, along with her brother, lightly older brother, Francis Frank. And this picture was taken uh, one year after I was born. Uh, she w stayed in New York City, became a long line telephone supervisor, which made me feel very good about the American telephone company, and met my father as he returned from World War I. Tom, do you have any memories of your mother? Could you tell us about that? I don't have very many, although I remember one when I was in my high chair, and I had been previously exposed to mashed potatoes, which I decided I didn't like. And so the next meal or so appeared these mashed potatoes again, and I somewhat petulantly said, I don't want those things, I don't like them. And she said, trust me, those are not mashed potatoes. And after some preparation, I took a bite, and they were miraculously mashed parsnips. So A, I learned trust your mom, and B, I learned how much I like parsnips. We still need to have parsnips at every Thanksgiving dinner. Right. <laughs> how did she come to die at such an early age? Well, my dad came from uh, Brownsville, Texas, where he was also orphaned. His father, Hall, was a Scottish wool buyer in the days, those days, I guess they raised sheep in Texas, southern Texas. And when he, when they died, he was adopted sort of by a Norwegian fig farmer. So at age four or five or six, he had to climb up trees and pick figs which he didn't like because it was hot and the insects bothered him. So after about the fourth grade, he quit school and then did a roster outing in the oil fields, learning about to bury tanks. When the war came, he enlisted in New York and came back to New York. And had, it was there for both of them were orphans at this time. And they had no money at all. Uh, she was. Uh, a long line supervisor made a little more than average wages, but he couldn't get a job very easily. So finally, after part time jobs here and there, they ended up being janitors in a low income uh, tenement. And somewhere or other, she got sick. I can remember they lived below the street level or going up in an ambulance being 
lifted out of the basement and disappearing into Lincoln Hospital, where she died after a short time. My brother, Bill, who was a, two years younger than me, later also a physician, went to Lincoln and looked it up and found that she had died of diphtheria. Poor people did not get inoculated for diphtheria in those days. And uh, another evidence of why I feel personally that the right to health and preventive medicine is an inherent human right. Thanks, Tom. Can you tell us about your brother Bill? Yeah. Brother Bill was born two years after I was. There had been another brother, James, who died less than a year old because of some sort of cardiac anomaly. Bill and I uh, were close buddies all our lives because uh, my mother died. My father worked in building tanks for new gasoline stations, which took him away from home for weeks at a time. We were boarded out here and there uh, for years until, uh, seems to me like a long, long time, but it was only about four years. And so we got to be very close and stay that way until we died. Until he died. He was uh, <clears throat> younger, he was <clears throat> physically different, very muscular, looked more like my dad. I look more like my Uncle Frank, thin, wiry. But he was strong, he was a mover and a longshoreman. My dad was a longshoreman at the time he married my... I was born, he listed as a longshoreman. And Bill uh, was, because of my stepmother who didn't like my way of thinking about things intellectually felt that he could, found that he was more willing to accept her advice about things and never went to high school. He went to Samuel Gompers Industrial High School to learn to become an electrician and then cut that out without getting a degree to go and join the Navy as World War II approached. There was no war at this time yet nor would there be for several years. And then later, on the GI Bill, came back, went to Harvard College, became a physical anthropologist, got a master's at the University of Pennsylvania, decided that medicine was really the thing for him, came back, was admitted to Harvard Medical School, I, uh, four years, five years behind me, and was graduated with the prize of be, having those characteristics judged by his classmates of those, those characteristics most desirable to have in a physician. Great. Well, can we roll it back a little bit to the time when you were...